<laughs> Cure a piece without proof of that blatant cheating, dude. This week, we opened on yet another flashback. Yeah, y'all could pretty much make a whole prequel show at this point. However, the real talking point, or something close to it, was Mashiro becoming acquainted with some stray cats and not being able to get along with them like Yuki. Again, he's at least still more useful than Morgana. Still, this did spur the mascot character into proving himself by becoming the boss of the Stray Cats through some good old bribery. Hey, politics in a nutshell. However, it didn't exactly work out, and all it got him was one of the cats who was more of a kitten, almost drowning, forcing him to go in and try and save it. He ended up passing out, resulting in another flashback during this flashback. I think Ed just flashed us backwards or something. And as it turned out, Mashiro was rival Kuhn, which, yeah, in hindsight, I really should have caught on to that between the similar eyes, his mom calling him Ma Kuhn, and the fact that him and Young Chroma VAs voice characters from Yu-Gi-Oh! Rush, albeit from different series. But yeah, as it turned out, his surname was originally Mashima, and Kuroma's was Kurozane. Redundant much redundant? And on top of going to the same grade school, they ended up in the same junior high class. Granted, they didn't recognize each other, likely because they were in different classes and only met really once, but quickly managed to make the connection when they learned what their dreams were. Though, Mashima, who learned it first, tried to use it against Chroma to make him look like some chuny weirdo. <laughs> Eh, nowadays an over-the-top blonde guy taking over the world isn't that uncommon. Hell, he could do it twice over. Man, sure enough, like recent events, trying to expose the evils of your opponent only really ends up exposing your own dirty laundry, as Chroma unintentionally reverse uno him and realized that he was his rival coon. As a result, both boys were ostracized by their class, and yet, in spite of his original intentions, ironically enough, they became even closer. Skipping ahead about a decade, the two managed to score an interview at Omizo, the supposed evil company, and were running late. Thus, they couldn't afford any distractions like maybe some random dude decided to take a cat nap in a river leading to the ocean and hide there. Fortunately, Chroma managed to save him. <laughs> Now you see, this is what happens when you raise your kids on Craig McCracken stuff. Rest in peace, my childhood. Anyway, the two ended up being late for their interviews, but as it turned out, the salary man was actually the CEO of the company. Yeah, I think this might be a commonly used story trope, especially in Japanese media, where a character saves an older dude who turns out to be their boss, and as a result of their good deed, they're rewarded handsomely. In this case, Bayou did immediately hire both of them, even though Chroma did all of the work, but let's not dwell on that too much. Well, actually, remember that for later, as I do think it becomes important. Well, we have been looking to replace Steve for about 13 years now. Jeez, it's been that long. Anyway, both guys started off as basic scrubs, including working under that replacement villain from last week. And yet, in spite of the fact that their superior had a horseshoe crab for a head, and that there was a freaking elephant in their cafeteria for the sake of a slightly racist joke, Mashma didn't see their company as anything unusual, especially not an evil organization. Hell, he had already given up on that dream, unlike Chroma, and wanted to take things from a more practical approach. Meanwhile, Chroma was still very much holding on to his childhood dream, which I do remind you was given to him by Mashma originally. Neither were necessarily wrong in their choices, but as we'll soon see, sometimes it's better not to restrain your ambitions. Anyway, after the two worked together to save their boss from a rampaging ethnic stereotype, Bayou called them into his office in a secret evil HQ which I'm pretty sure is just every meeting room at Amazon. But yeah, he offered both men a promotion to become an evil general, which even seemed to reignite Mashima's interest in the subject. Unfortunately for him, he wasn't Bayou's main choice, as he was more interested in the person who could deal with his little elephant test. As a result, he decided to hold a competition to see which of them would actually get the promotion. And in spite of showing clear interest earlier, Mashima still tried to pretend like he had given up on his dream. Regardless, both of them were given cards that would give them some of their company's monthly magic, and were flown to a beach to play a game of Find the Flag with the promotion on the line. Neither were able to find it, but after Chroma used more of his bear magic, Mashima realized they could just use the card to make the flag easier to find. 
However, I guess these things ran on Ojamajo magic, as it ended up doing it in the most over-the-top and obtuse way possible. As a result, even though he tried to go for the win, the giant flag almost fell on him, forcing Chroma to save and win the competition by technically getting to the flag first. However, Chroma kind of rightfully decided to turn down the position, as not only did Mashima outthink him, but he quote-unquote won by rescuing his friend, which isn't exactly all that evil, so he wanted to give him the win, and Rival Kun took it pretty well. Am I crazy, or is this one of the best shonen rivalries I've seen in decades? I mean, when you get down to it, it's one where Mashima kind of ended up becoming his own greatest enemy in many ways. I mean, not only did he just kind of give up on his dreams, even when they were slowly becoming within his reach, he also ended up creating a living embodiment of those dreams in Chroma, a reflection of those ambitions that end up constantly leading him towards becoming an evil general, as he did most of the work, all the while making him feel all the more inferior. And this is all capped off by this moment, where while he did save him, Chroma ended up really highlighting Mashima's inferiority that led to him almost killing himself. Thus, when his reflection gave him a reward that he hadn't really earned, he lashed out saying that Chroma gave up on his aspirations, when really, that's been him all this time. And as a result of attacking his rival who had no powers at the time, his card penalized him the same way it did Hugh, which as we pointed out was very nicely foreshadowed in the last episode. And with that, we got the rather tragic origins of a magical mascot and an evil general. <laughs> We then return to the previous flashback in progress, with Kaju managing to save both Mashiro and the cat. And the episode ended with him receiving his collar from Kaju, who didn't even buy to dry it off beforehand. Yeah, he's gonna get a bit of a rash later. This was a surprisingly really good origin story for a hero and villain of the show. I mean, at first, with all the damn flashbacks, it seemed like we were going to begin another one of the show's usual goofy outings, but by the end, it became a surprisingly deep story about a friendship born through a rivalry that abruptly just kind of burnt out. It's the kind of origin story that I would love to see in other stories, as it does highlight the thin line between good and evil at times. While I'll admit, I should have caught into Mashiro being the kid from Chroma's past, it was still a good twist, as like with Kamen Rider, I do find it really interesting when the heroes and villains have some sort of deeper connection. In this case, just like the show writers and the current season, Kaju's powers technically derive from Forza Magna by way of Mashiro being a former employee. And this is all due to his rivalry with Chroma, which as over the top and obnoxious as he could get, a lot of things that led to Mashiro becoming the cursed cat was due to his own stubbornness and hubris. From his initial attempts to humiliate him, to his inability to accept him relinquishing the competition to him, it was all because he couldn't just admit that he was both smarter, and yet also not that much different from him in terms of dreams and goals. For it all, he got some righteous karma, and now ironically has sided with a magical girl of justice. Meanwhile, part of the reason Chroma continues to be a villain was likely due to wanting to carry on both of their dreams even after his friend attacked him. It's gripping drama to say the least, and does add an extra layer to both of these characters, and even kind of shades their past interactions in a new light. Of course, I'm looking forward to seeing how the girls take this in, especially Kaju, once she learns about her fairy partner's past. For now though, this is just a really good episode with a very interesting origin story for a mascot and villain combo of all things. The animation might not have been the greatest, but when I'm this into the characters, well, there's no hard feelings, unlike these two. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and if you're interested, maybe check out some of our other videos on this channel, maybe as a bit of a stress reliever after last night. I will not confirm or deny who I voted for and whether or not I'm satisfied with the results themselves, but I will admit I am enjoying the fireworks from the fallout, so there's that at least. Look forward to whatever might come next in this crazy world. And until next time though, for now my friends, and uh... Hey, you don't get to tell me when I have to go to bed, mister.